And I can still remember, I mean, that was what, 70 years ago, more than 70 years ago. Uh, I had, remember, I'm a kampong boy from Nilai. Yeah? Uh, I think that was about the second or third time I'd sat in a car. And <laughs> from there, we had taken this car and come to Brickfields. And Brickfields, there were some things, you know, lights. Lights, there were, uh, the whole temple was decorated with candles. And for me, I, it was, Deva world must have looked like that. Okay. Then what happens is we, uh, we, we, we meaning my family, that's my sister and so on. Uh, we went into the shrine room. And as we walked into the shrine room, I saw that the same Buddha image that's still there. All right. And as we knelt down and I looked up, I saw this figure must have been at least 20 feet tall from my vantage point. <laughs> this was our young chief and he was looking on. He was so majestic and uh, he knew obviously we didn't know how to pray. So he led us in the five precepts. He led us in the five. This was my first Vesak celebration, formal Vesak celebration, where I, and also my first meeting with chief. And what I got a lot from him was his down-to-earth, down-to-earth uh, understanding of the deep teaching of the Buddha. He knew this deep teaching was for intellectuals. Very important, must be preserved. But it has to be preserved by the majority, by the Puttujana. And when he approached them, he didn't delve in all the higher things which people found difficult to understand. Basically, he was teaching do good, the five precepts. And he was able to say it in such funny terms. Yeah? And as a human being, one thing I always remember of him, he, to he told me this, that uh, sometimes he gets tired and uh, he wants to be alone. And one day, he was lying down and a man approached through, remember where the, the, Buddha, uh, the chief is always lying down in that couch there and his door is always open until about 9 p.m. Yeah? Anybody can walk in. And this guy walks in and uh, the, the chief knew that he was a very boring person. And he, once he comes in, he sits there for about two hours. And the chief was in no mood to accept him. So what he did was he closed his eyes. And as he closed his eyes, the man waited. And the man and then closed, half opened his eyes, he saw the man was still there. Then he started going. <laughs> and the man turned around and walked off. And the <laughs> chief said, okay, he's gone. Now I'm free. Then, <laughs> that, that was the kind of person chief was. When, he, were, he wasn't going to be rude and say, I've got no time for you or whatever, or suffer in silence yeah, and be a good Buddhist. Yeah, he used a skillful means of saving himself. And there's so many other jokes that Chief used to regret and his attitude to people. Yeah. One thing about Chief, he never bore a grudge. I can say that very, very safely. Never bore a grudge, never took revenge. His ego was zero. He was very forceful. He could get very angry. Yeah, he could get very wrong. But he, these were the signs of greatness. That's why when he died, KL came to a stop. And what is Wesa? It is the commemoration of three great events that happened during the time of the Buddha. Namely, his birth, his enlightenment, and his passing away, all of which took place on the same full moon day of the month of Vesa in India. Right? So these three sort of summarize the entire uh, history of the Buddha's dispensation. So, it is a devotional practice. 
it's full of rituals. Yeah? But behind those rituals and those devotional practices is a deep connection, a deep psychological, spiritual connection with everything that happened in the past. And that's symbolized by the Vesak flag. When you see the flag, what happens in your mind? A spirituality arises. And this spirituality gives rise to deep psychological feelings within you. Okay? Uh, you, you, you cannot cut it down to a sort of psychologi- uh, scientific 2 plus 2 equals 4 kind of thing. Yeah? Vesak brings out the lights, the candles, the spirituality, the vegetarianism, the charity, the blood donations, all of these point to one thing. They point to the fact that we wish to honor the Buddha who gave us this Dharma. And the best way to honor this Buddha yeah, is not by burning joss sticks and offering flowers and so on. That's, that sort of highlights it through this excessive devotion. But what happens the next day and the next and the next? Once you understand this, we remember what the Buddha teaches us. Vesak highlights this. Through faith, we highlight the one thing that the Buddha taught. Do good, avoid evil, purify the mind. Do good, avoid evil, purify the mind. This is the teaching of all the Buddhas. Outside of this, there is no Dharma. Remember that. So, lights, candles, joysticks, flowers, float processions, all of these things are ritualistic, but they lead to spirituality. That is the one we have to grasp. Happy Vesak.